We start with a man who, since the recent death of Lucian Freud, is commonly considered Britain's greatest living painter, David Hockney. Unlike Freud, who stuck with conventional brush and paint, Hockney has constantly explored new technology. Using Polaroids in photo montages from the 70s and 80s, such as Pear Blossom Highway, a landscape created when he was living in Los Angeles. He's also argued in books and documentaries that the old masters, such as Caravaggio, used mechanical devices containing mirrors to create their images. And announcing today a major exhibition opening in January next year at the Royal Academy in London, he revealed that he's been using nine digital cameras attached to a car to make preliminary sketches for vast multi-panelled paintings of the East Yorkshire landscape in 360 degrees over 12 months. David Hockney previewed some of the images this morning, popped out for a cigarette, he's a keen pro-smoker, and then spoke to me. I said that the East Yorkshire paintings are about his relationship with England on coming home from L.A., would he characterise that relationship as a love affair or a tolerant truce? Well, I like East Yorkshire. <laughs> uh, remember, I've been going there for... I, I never was away from England that long because of my family. But England to me is a bit mean now. It's, too mean. it's mean, I think. I, I mean, for instance, I go to York to pick up people at the station and the only place you can smoke if I have to wait is a tiny little area outside... No seat for older smokers. That's mean. That's just mean. I told them that. I told them in New York. I said, it's, you know, you're just trying to... You think, oh, well, then nobody pushed them over there. You can't treat people like that. You can't, actually. On the other hand, you know, I'm English. I feel deeply English. I love it. I mean, I'm going deaf, though, you see, so I'm not that social which gives you advantages. I don't care if I'm never invited back. I mean, that gives you that. But um, I can't be that social because I can't hear that well. I mean, that's why, like, I don't go to the theatre much anymore. I used to see everything at one time. But uh, you you just have to accept it, you don't mind. I mean, I can see better. I think actually it made me see better. I think I became aware of it. I even pointed out once... uh, I pointed this out to John uh, Richardson. When he, he, I think his second volume, he was telling you Picasso didn't react to music. Uh, it was the one art... He, he said he could never tell the masterpieces or something. And this is when Brock played a violin and a lot of music. Then it occurred to me, I said, he was probably tone deaf. It meant he wasn't hearing it. But I thought, he certainly wasn't tone blind. He could see more tones than anybody because his grasp of chiaroscura is so good, isn't it, from an early age? And that meant he's seeing more tones. But he wouldn't know, I suppose. Uh, you don't know. But, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've gone into that. I thought, you know, if, if you're blind, you locate yourself in space through a hearing. I've no idea where the sound is coming from. But I think it's increased my spatial perceptions to counter it. And you wouldn't know that unless you were a person using it, would you? You know, meaning mm. looking at things, thinking of... Sp- and landscape, as I point out, is a spatial thrill, I think. That's, that's why it's not so good in photography, because it doesn't deal with space unless you put a few cameras there or something. I want to ask you about that, because you, do, you suggest strongly in a lot of what you said that Painting is visually superior. You, you're quite rude about television. You say it's a very pokey little picture. You're very rude about 3D. Um, you think that the best way of looking at something is visual art? Well, I mean, I'm a visual artist. I'm a, as I said, I'm a person who loves looking. And I love pictures I mean, and images. I mean, I, I point out there's a history of images that is a bit different from the history of art, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot going to burst open soon. You know, uh, Clovis Whitfield is just bringing out a book on Caravaggio where he, he too agrees how they were done and it makes him infinitely more interesting. And I look back at the art historians. I mean, I used to think, you know, they were lofty up there, but I've now realised they're just as corrupt as anything else. They don't look hard enough. I, I mean, I'm a bit excited. The new things will throw a lot of old away. I mean, it is, really. But you don't quite get it from the press because 
they're so worried they're just about to die, aren't they, really? I mean, I see that, I can see that. But, I mean, they've had a long run. Power is spreading to people, isn't it, actually? Yeah. In the um, images you were showing this morning, particularly the ones done with the, the nine cameras and the, um, the multiple images and filmed over a year, we complain a lot about this country, about the weather, as you know, particularly in this drenched summer. But looking at those images, it's a kind of celebration of the weather, the way I that mean, the seasons I, I change. I yeah, the weather here. They say it's bad weather, and I always think, bad for who? <laughs> you know, that's your first question. Just start asking questions. I mean... One time it snowed, not when we were filming, the time before, this snow came and according to the BBC, stay in, stay in. I said, we're not staying. Come on, I'm going to show you something great. We had a four-wheeler, we go up this road. It was fantastic, absolutely fantastic, like a fairy land of snow on every little branch. We were the only people there because television, had, stay in and we'll sell you something, isn't it? That's what it is. Instead of saying... Go out and have a look at it. It was ravishing, absolutely. My French friend said, said he'd never seen anything like it. And I said, well, if you listen to the television, they'd tell you to stay in. I mean, Ruskin said there was no such thing as bad weather in England because it's a temperate place. It's never too cold. It's never too hot. I mean, New York City is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful country, England, isn't it? You know, I mean, I pointed out that... Um, you know, in California, you, get, you do get a spring. I mean, there's certain flowers come up, and if you, once you've been there long enough, you notice and you know. So your, your general thing is, uh, message is we don't look enough. We don't, people don't look enough at the world. I think so, yeah. I think looking is a positive act, isn't it? I mean, it takes you... I mean, if, the thing is, I, I did complain when they gave up drawing, teaching drawing, because I said teaching drawing is teaching people to look. I mean... It's interesting, all the great photographers of the 20th century were all trained as draftsmen, Cartier, Bresson, Brassard, meaning they, they'd been taught to look harder. And uh, I was one of the few people who complained, but I wasn't teaching, so I had no power. But I could deal with them. They came to me and went, oh, it's hot in here again, it's back to the life room. I said, no, 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 it's forward to the life room. You know, you got the direction wrong. I could deal with them. But they didn't listen to me. And I said, I think this is a terrible thing to do. I mean, it's coming back now, because it'll never go away. Of course, I point out some of the great movies now, they're all drawn. Have you noticed that? They're drawn. Toy Story, using Kyroscura. I mean, I, I don't go see that many films, but I go and see them if I think they'll be visually interesting, because I can't hear the thing. But So I do go see things. I mean, I went to see Avatar, of course I would. I mean, I didn't think much of it. As I say, it, it didn't show you enough. You were lucky not to be able to hear the script for Avatar, I think. You were better off with um, Do you just know, seeing I'll the pictures. I'll tell you this. Um, I, it was so loud, the soundtrack, when everything moved, I took my hearing aids out because it <laughs> went straight through them. And we left after about an hour. And I, I saw it at Kensington Odeon. And I noticed not 100 feet from the Kensington Odeon, a brand new store selling hearing aids. I thought they'll be going straight from the cinema in there soon. But I noticed this. I noticed there's now another one across the road, meaning they're a chain. And what that means is a lot more people are having hearing problems. Now, I've had hearing aids for 30 years, because mine's from Hereditary, my father. But... Uh, a lot of rock and roll and things must be giving a lot more people because I see the in LA in the LA Times I noticed the ads for hearing aids in our whole page they never were uh, never were at all it must be a lot more people and you know you realise you get you get a bit isolated here it's not uh, the reason they don't cater much to deaf people is deaf people the last place they want to go is a meeting you see so they don't get together. Uh, so you don't get uh, things, and uh, you don't get any benefits or anything. So perfectly happy at home, reading, painting, I'm fine. As long as my eyes are fine, I'm fine, yeah. yeah. To what extent do you follow what goes on in British art, Tracy, I mean, Damien Hurst? Do, do you think of yourself as the godfather of British art now? Not 
really. No. <laughs> um, I mean, I follow, I follow it if I can. I mean, I'm not... I don't really care if I miss something. I mean, I don't know what I'm... I don't think I'm missing too much. But I follow it, and I, would, I wouldn't knock artists. I think you need all kinds of artists. I think you do. We, we, we get them. And I'd encourage them, even if I don't think that much of them myself. And I'm generally interested in depiction, uh, meaning not just painting, that means photography, film, anything. There are problems with depiction that are permanent. They're not thought about too much now, although they're growing because of Photoshop and things like that. Uh, I went to the launch of Photoshop in 1989. They invited me because of the Pear Blossom Highway. And we went up for two days. They didn't like it because I took the dogs and I smoked. They don't like, they don't like smokers, they don't like dogs. I said, you've got to lump it, you invited me here. That's too bad for you. Uh, I wasn't going to give in. And uh, after, we just demonstrated it. And when we were driving back to L.A., I said to my assistant, I said, this is the end of, that was a drawing, and this is the end of chemical photography. And that's a big event, actually. Well, I was a bit out for a few years, but not that much. But I could see it. You couldn't do this with chemical photography. So I saw the difference. Um, I'll tell you the best put down of San Francisco. Somebody told me this. San Francisco. A million people. A thousand stories. It is like that. Um, you said you want to go back to portrait painting. Is there any one specifically you'd like to paint? Well, I, I generally only paint people I know. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not a flatterer, really. I just paint them. I mean, well, like Lucian wanted to know them. I mean, he didn't want... Uh, I tended to turn down uh, requests like I would because you have to then please them a bit or something. And remember... If they, t- he, he if they the rejected queen. Rembrandt's portraits, they're more likely to reject mine as well, meaning I don't really want those problems. You know, they're not... Uh, Lucien Freud painted the Queen famously, but that kind of request would you take? Well, I've been requested, and it, it, it's actually a terrific subject. There is, there's one there. But I'd require quite a bit of time. I wouldn't do it like Lucien. I mean, you could make a terrific image. I've no doubt. I mean, in a way, the Anigoni was a terrific image, wasn't it? A long time. It's memorable. I mean, remember, I remember people attacking it because I was an art student. You know, it's kind of crap, but it's stuck there, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, might it still happen? You painting the Queen? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. That. I mean, it's simply, I, I. Well, when I was asked, I told them I, you know, I'm very busy painting England, actually. Her, her country, I'm painting England, that's it. So I hope they like that. David Hockney, A Bigger Picture is in the main galleries of the Royal Academy in London from the 21st of January to the 9th of April 2012, or 2012, as David Hockney prefers. This is Front Row on BBC Radio 4.